Well, welcome to another edition of uh, If I Can Do It, You Can Do It Too. Today's project is to try and install a biker bar into a toy carrier. Now in this video, I'm not gonna go into a great amount of detail about the biker bar itself because you can just Google BW Biker Bar and there's a bunch of videos about it. It's a brilliant idea, especially for this bike trying to tie it down and this trailer, and I'll explain why. The front end of this bike has no, uh, any good way to tie it down from. Um, I suppose with a road glide, what you would do is go up inside the fairing and grab onto the lower triple tree. The problem is, is that there's no way out for straps without touching paint. You've got on the CVO bike, you've got uh, this fairing, this lower, the fairing, of course, and then this lower fairing extension and the painted fender and painted shocks or powder coated shocks. And it's just, you can't get with the bike in the trailer, the D hooks are very close. So this plywood representing the front of the trailer or the, or the wheel chalk that was in the trailer, it, there's just no way to get leverage on that distance to to clamp it down from the axle, which is my ideal way is to clamp it from the axle. But in a traditional trailer, you, you can set the bike back from the D-hooks and clamp it forward and pull it into the chalk. There's just no way. You end up pulling it sideways, not forward. So I'm not real comfortable tying a bike down to the engine guard, although I probably could go to the frame or to the, the floorboards, but, and that's what I did over the winter, but I wasn't really trailing the bike anyway. And when you haven't got any straps on the upper half of the bike the bike tends to tip side to side when you're trying to clamp it just from the bottom you just can't get any good leverage on this trailer and i'll show you the trailer here's the trailer it's a clamshell they call it a toy carrier a great trailer light and uh, perfect size for this one bike it tows behind the the you know a sport utility or a pickup truck easily you don't even know it's behind you it really is nice, but you can't tie this bike down. Now, if I had my street glide, I had those those tie down hooks on the on the upper forks, and you could pull the bike down. But the, with this new road glide, I can't find a good spot to tie it down. So going on to the CVO forum, I found out about the biker bar, and if you go and look at that video, you'll see what I mean. So now here's the issue: it's not a traditional trailer. They're made out of some polycarbonate shell and inside it has checker plate and underneath the checker plate 3 8 inch plywood so why not just bolt down right through the plywood and the checker plate and the vinyl well because the vinyl floor while it's 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 actually a, a like a wafer board it's hard to explain. The best way to show you is underneath, where you can see the frame rails and the, the underside of the floor. So going under the trailer, you can see the frame rails are set up and the floor is, is a series of wells all the way across. So depending on where the barker bar gets mounted, you really can't sandwich the mounting plate solidly to a piece of plywood and because uh, you've got like two inches of air in those wells and that's the problem and the other problem is of course that the plywood that's underneath this checkerboard isn't thick enough it's got to be a three-quarter inch piece of plywood for the for the shell so i've got the plywood and i'm going to uh remove this checker plate and the three-eighths inch plywood that's underneath and I'm going to use it as a template and draw it out on this new three quarter inch plywood and put the three quarter inch in. So then we've got enough strength in the flooring. And then I've got to figure a way once this is all out to mount the biker bar so that the supporting plates underneath the plywood will rest inside those voids uh, in the uh, between the frame rails because you can't get at it from the bottom. In other words, I'll mount the biker bar to the plywood, then reinstall the plywood into this, and hopefully I can line it up in such a way that the uh, underneath mounting hardware will reside in the uh, 
in the void. So what are the steps? Well, the first thing I did was remove all of the hardware that holds the checker plate and this 3 8 inch piece of plywood down to the frame. And it is uh, pretty easy, actually. So just walking around, it's a number of long half inch bolts with nylock nuts. And they literally are drilled through the checkerboard, right through the plywood. They go straight through the frame. So they're long, long nuts, nuts and bolts. And you remove them all, all the way around, up one side and down the other. And you remove the, uh, the D-rings, which are just uh, O-rings, really, that are also threaded long, five-inch long ones, and they're just nut and bolted. Then remove the, uh, sorry, the wheel chalk, because it's not required when using the biker bar. And again, if you don't know what a biker bar is, seriously, go and take a look at the videos just Google BW Biker Bar and watch the video. It's, it's brilliant. Okay, so once the hardware is removed, then it's a matter of figuring out where the biker bar is going to get mounted inside the trailer. So looking underneath, um, I know I've got to be at least 40 inches back to miss the frame rail, um, the first sideways frame rail, and have some room. The axle is right there. So it's very... It's just not the right, it's just not perfect, the setup. But it's doable, so this is why we're making the video. In any case, that dimension, you see that green tape and that line that runs sideways, that's exactly 49 inches from the edge, front edge, leading edge of the checker plate, 49 inches. Now, how did I determine what that is? Well, the only way you can determine it, and it could be different for your bike, but for my bike, the first thing you have to determine is where the biker bar is going to get mounted on the bike. Now, again, I'm not going to go into detail about how to mount the biker bar uh, bar. It's simple. It's just a matter of uh, putting it up underneath the bike and twisting this, uh, this uh, wrench, tightening it on. But then you just measure from the front tire, and I've used this piece of plywood standing up underneath my lift, perpendicular to the bike, run the front tire up against it measure back that was 48 inches now on your bike it could be 50 inches or 47 inches or i'm not sure it just depends you've got to find the right location for that bar without crimping anything underneath like i said this is just a touch over 48 inches and i've picked 49 which means when this bike gets mounted into the biker bar clamp in the butt in the trailer the front end will be about an inch away from the edge of the trailer. And that's uh, about where I want it because the bike is just, just fits inside this trailer. So once you've measured that distance from a, a leading edge of the, of the uh, checker plate to 49 inches, that's that line, then you just have to center the biker bar. And you can see that biker bar plate is... Um, 25 inches wide and about six and three quarter inches deep. And uh, all you have to do is locate where those holes are, where the mounting holes are, make sure it's centered inside this trailer and right on that 49 inch line. And that's where it's gonna get mounted. So if you remember the green lines on the floor, um, I drilled the pilot holes, just quarter inch holes while it was in the trailer. And um, you can see that with the checker plate removed, it's just a plywood floor. Uh, looks like a 4x8 sheet and then maybe another 10 inches of wood up at the front. And um, we did talk about the flooring. Oh, So you can see that hole, when you put a probe down it, there's, a, I'd say, a good 4 inches of air before you hit the, uh, another layer of plastic, as I showed you underneath, there's a well right there. And so what we're gonna have to do is cut the brackets. And let me show you the brackets. So these are the two brackets. There's one on each side. There's one there and a big five eighths inch bolt. And um, this plate gets mounted underneath the plywood and that big hole right there lines up with the hole in the biker bar. Now you use a couple of uh, 
carriage bolts to hold this to the plywood. And the reason for that is, is that this allows you to, when you remove those two bolts, pull the biker bar out of the trailer and, and remain, uh, you have the entire trailer as a flat floor to use for something else, as opposed to having the uh, mechanism stuck in the middle of your trailer. So this gets bolted to the underside of the plywood. Well, what I'm gonna have to do is uh, cut the vinyl below, beneath the uh, plywood so that this will sit down in the recessed area. So we'll mark it out, that's the hole. We'll mark out the vinyl, I'll cut it away. That'll reveal a four inch deep void. And then I'll mount, once I cut the new plywood out, out of three quarter, I'll mount this to the bottom of that plywood. Actually, it'll go like that. And um, then put the plywood and checker plate back in the, uh, in the trailer and mount the biker bar to it. So I don't suppose you need direction on how to trace a piece of plywood. Anyway, a couple of horses laid the three quarter inch out. Just trace it out onto the three quarter. And uh, it's gonna be a little short. I'll have to make a patch for the far end of the trailer. I marked, like you know, I, I said before, I marked where the uh, biker bar was gonna go. And I'm gonna mount it to the underside of that, those brackets to the underside of the plywood. But they're gonna need to sit in so that the floor sits flat. So I was able to cut, I marked them, and then I went a little bit bigger. So I've got a little room to move. And then just use the reciprocating saw or the vibrating saw and cut out a little square. But uh, that's the hole. And that's the way that trailer is assembled. It's like a sandwich. And that's the reason why you can't uh, mount it from underneath like a traditional trailer. Okay, so we've got uh, the, car, the plywood cut and we've mounted the brackets to the underside of this plywood. So I'll show you what they look like. So you can see they're mounted to the underside of the plywood with carriage bolts. And then of course these are the bolts that uh, will bolt down the biker bar. I've already tested it and they're spaced properly. Now that's a three quarter inch hole. The project now is to put this plywood in into the trailer. So I've gone ahead and cut where those plates underneath the plywood are gonna reside. And I've cleaned up the floor of the trailer so that it's you know, it was pretty messy. There's a lot of leaves and grit and grime underneath. So I've given it a little clean, and now we'll put the plywood in. Okay, so the plywood is cut, and one full 4x8 sheet of plywood will work. We'll have to cut a couple of uh, pieces out of the scrap, but uh, one piece of plywood, and there's essentially no waste. And it fits. So we've got it pinned down with some screwdrivers. Now the task is to get the checker plate back in and um, make sure we can line up all the holes because they it's thicker and a little less play and I might need to get new hardware and I haven't figured that out yet, but stay tuned. Okay, so all of the hardware had to be replaced because the three quarter inch plywood is in fact too thick for the hardware that came on the trailer now. Yours might be different, but it was just a 50 bucks worth of five inch uh, bolts and some uh, nylock nuts, some washers, some bigger uh, tie down rings, longer ones. And then the only modification that has to be made is down by the tailgate. If you see where the door, where it uh, comes here, when it closes, it encroaches onto the plywood. So I had to notch the plywood back, and we notched half of it away. And then I just banged the aluminum in and uh, with a body hammer and flattened it all out. And now the tailgate closes. And that's it. She's bolted down. Now the only thing I gotta do is adjust the height of the uh, clamps and to, to suit the bike, and then test drive it. And so that's it. The biker bar is installed inside the toy carrier trailer.
Now, the whole project took about 10 hours um, over the weekend, and I did it by myself, so I had no extra help. Um, your total bill of materials is a three quarter inch by four by eight piece of plywood. It's a dozen five sixteenths by five inch long uh, bolts with nuts, nylock nuts, and some washers. Uh, half a dozen eye bolts for tie downs, they're three eighths inch diameter, and uh, some nylocks for those as well. And the total cost of the plywood, maybe a hundred bucks for the plywood and, uh, and the hardware. Plus, of course, you're going to buy the biker bar. Now, I'm going to put a link below for that biker bar video I kept mentioning through the uh, through the uh, video. But this is for sure. If I can do it, you can do it too. Have a great day.